I really wanted to be one of the girls that got it, but I'm not one of them. I'm more like a confused girl. I'm more of a, I have so many questions girl. It's basically just women absolutely losing it, but for good reason. <laughs> Mama didn't raise a quitter. She did raise a whiny little- everybody doing i hope you're ready for this video because i am not <laughs> hello my friends i <laughs> i'm so excited for this video because part one was so successful like in terms of reading books that i actually really enjoyed and i even found a new favorite classic and a new favorite genre so i definitely wasn't opposed to doing a part two of reading instagram's most popular books this one i am so excited for maybe even a little bit more than part one just because the books that i have selected i have been either wanting to read for the longest time or i've seen on instagram so many times Times, that is kind of ridiculous that I haven't read them yet. So hi, welcome to part two of reading Bookstagram's most famous books or most popular books. These are books that I have seen on my feed over and over again. So many people are talking about them. So many people have loved them and they've shared their annotations. They've shared their thoughts, their opinions, their tears. And I kind of want to jump on the bandwagon. I don't want to be left behind. First things first, let's go through the three books that I'm going to be reading for this social experiment, um, social media experiment, if you will. The first one, which I'm pretty sure everybody has seen by now, Everything I Know About Love by Dolly Alderton. If you haven't seen this, I feel like we are on completely different sides of Instagram because I feel like this took Instagram by storm. This is a memoir by this woman, obviously, and she's just recounting her life in her 20s, the things that she's learned about love and dating and friendships and just coming of age, coming into your 20s, how it feels, how it sucks how good it can be. I'm not the biggest fan of memoirs, but I feel like according to some of the annotations and some of the quotes that I've seen on Instagram, this just feels like my kind of book. And I just think that I'm going to be learning quite a lot of things as I read this. So yes, everything I know about love. My nails even match, sort of, not really. Let's move on. The next book I'm going to be reading for this experiment is The Woman Destroyed by Simone de Beauvoir. Do I know what this book is about? No, <laughs> but if I'm basing it off the title of the book, I'm thinking it has to do with women um, just losing it, you know, like unhinged women, which was the theme of part one of reading Bookstagram's favorite books. So maybe this will continue that sort of topic of women going absolutely insane for various reasons. You know, they're all very understandable. <laughs> this was published in 1969. So I think this is the oldest book of the pack. And it's going to be interesting because it's also translated from French. So I'm just very excited to get into this one to just find out why it's been on my feed so many times. It calls for a very aesthetic post. So I would see why so many people would add it to their feed, but I wanna see if there's a bit more to this book than just its aesthetic value. The last book is probably the one that I am most excited for because this is from an author that I've already read one book from her and it's become an all-time favorite. It made me cry my eyes out. I mean, to say that I have high expectations would be a little bit of an understatement. Um, Conversations with Friends by Miss Sally Rooney. I recently, well not recently, a few months back, I became part of the Sally Rooney cult and I've only actually read one book of hers because, I don't know, I think that normal people gave me these unattainable expectations and by not reading her other books, I can just pretend that they're all as good as normal people. But if I actually read them and they're not as good as I think they're going to be, I feel like I'm going to be a little bit disappointed, just a tiny bit. 
but it's time. Like Instagram is virtually screaming at me to read this book. Just like Rooney in general is very Instagram famous. It's time. I have to read conversations with friends. Some people have even said that this is better than normal people, which I don't, I don't know how that's possible, but hey, I'm open to the impossible. Conversations with friends. Do I know what it's about? No sir, no ma'am. I like going into books knowing absolutely nothing. I like being surprised as I read. I don't want to start the book knowing already what's going to go down, what the climax is going to be. I just like being surprised. These are the three books that I'm going to be reading for part two of reading Instagram's favorite books. I am so excited. I think the one that I am most excited for, I do have to be honest with you guys, is Conversations with Friends. Just because my expectations are up here. I'm also really excited for everything I know about love because I've just seen it so many times. I've read so many annotations and it just sounds like it's going to be it's going to change my life basically, or that's what I'm hoping for. I'm loving the color scheme. We've got some blues, some yellows, some pinks. A stunning, brilliant, amazing, fantastic. I think I'm going to start with The Woman Destroyed and then I'm gonna read everything I know about love. And finally, I'm going to finish off with conversations with friends. This also has a TV show, and I think if I like the book, I might watch the TV show as well and compare and contrast. How are they different? How are they the same? Let's discuss. <laughs> Who knows, maybe I'm going to find a five-star read in this pile, um, a new favorite book. Hopefully, fingers crossed, like I've been searching for a new favorite book for the longest time. Maybe I'll finally hit the jackpot in this experiment, this reading challenge. Without further ado, let's get to reading. read The Woman Destroyed. Yeah, like I read it, totally I read it. And this is The Woman Destroyed. <laughs> I'm trying really hard to form coherent sentences here, but I'm failing because this book just took me for a spin. It blindfolded me. I'm kind of dizzy, but I'm kind of happy about it because this book is very eye-opening in a sense. It is very much about loneliness and female rage and the process of aging and the things that we lose, but also the things that we gain, the burden that women have to carry with them. All of these themes are explored through three short stories. Each story follows a different woman 
going through a crisis, a very personal, very traumatizing, destructive, shattering crisis in their lives. And I just think this was fantastic. All of these women are trapped by circumstances, sometimes by their own making, sometimes by things that they cannot control. And it's the process of them trying to come to terms with what their life is like now. It's really interesting because in one of the stories, it starts out and this woman is so happy. She's so in love with life, with her husband, with everything that she's built. And the more the story progresses, the more that all of the things that she thought she had start to crumble. And with it, her mental stability and her mental health destabilized. She is no longer a coherent human. She can't really function. She starts to shut down in every sense of the word. It's weird to say, but it's just so interesting to see these women just sort of lose it <laughs> and be so open about it and try to understand why this is happening. I am just so awed by this book in all honesty because it shows sides of women that are not often portrayed in books. If they are, it's just seen as this woman is insane, this woman is mad, this woman don't pay any attention to her, she's just going through it. But even though these women are going through it, even though these women are probably not making any sense, even though they're going through an existential crisis, you have to listen to them. You have to give them your time of day they deserve your attention and you will give it to them. This definitely has more than just an aesthetic purpose. I'm so glad that Instagram introduced me to this book because it also showed me a new type of genre that I want to get to or that I want to explore. And I do have to say, sorry, um, Taylor Swift definitely read this book. <laughs> I know that it's a little bit annoying that I do this a lot, but sometimes there were some phrases, there were some moments that were so reminiscent of a Taylor Swift song, especially August and Dear John and Death by a Thousand Cuts. So many instances of Taylor Swift references and I just, I just know Simone de Beauvoir would have loved Taylor Swift. She would have definitely 100% been a Swifty. And it's just so sad that she didn't get to live at the same time that Taylor Swift did. It was rich and powerful, amazing writing. There are some lines in here that I had to reread over and over again because they were so beautifully constructed and the emotion that they were portraying was so shocking to me and oddly, very relatable. For something that was written in the 1960s, I found myself represented in some of these lines and some of these phrases. It's always going to be so crazy to me or so wild in a good way how I can find little pieces of myself represented in literature that was published years and years ago. There are some emotions or feelings or thoughts that are so universal and so timeless that you'll always be able to find them in a piece of history or a piece of literature that was published over 50 years ago. And that is always just going to be such a wild but beautiful concept to me. It was just such a wonderful experience. And that's weird to say because it's basically just women absolutely losing it, but for good reason. <laughs> now that I've finished The Woman Destroyed, I am so excited to finally pick up everything I know about Love by Dolly Alderton. Is this going to be a five star? Is this going to change my life? Only time will tell.
tried so hard, but this book is so boring. <laughs> I don't want to say it too loud because I don't want everybody coming for me, but this book is so boring. I'm so sorry. Like, why should I care? You know what I mean? Like, why should I have to read about this woman who's just drinking she loves drinking she loves going out at 4 a.m wasting all the money that is not hers she never has to suffer the consequences of her very idiotic decisions it was like okay for a while but it just keeps on repeating and i only made it i haven't even finished i only made it to page 63 <laughs> I really don't see why I should care about this woman that I don't know, but loves drinking and drinking. Like, what What am I supposed to learn from this? I'm not saying that a book has to be relatable for me to like it, but there must be like something there. And there is, there nothing, is nothing here. here. <laughs> this is not giving what I thought it would. I'm so confused as to what people love about this book and I'm, I feel so left out because I want it so bad to be part of the hype train. I wanted to be like, oh my God, I get it. I'm one of the girls that get it, but I'm really not. And I really want to DNF, but again, I'm reading this for this video, for this experiment. So I think that I owe it to you guys. And I also owe it to myself who spent $13 on this book. I don't know how to explain how bored I am, but I am so bored. Mama didn't raise a quitter. She did raise a whiny little, I will continue, but I just wanted to let everybody know that I'm not having a good time. <laughs> That's it for this update. <laughs>
everything she thought she knew about love, she talks to us about that. As she starts to grow up, you can see how the things that she thought she knew, they start to change or they start to morph into something new and she starts to realize how wrong she was or how right she was. And it's basically this coming of age novel in your 20s, which is, I think we can all agree, one of the weirdest and most confusing times of a human's life. Dolly also touches on themes of grief and the beauty standards of today's society, as well as eating disorders, and she also talks a lot about the importance of friendships, specifically female friendships, and just how beautiful they can be. I think this is really just a love letter to female friendships because through her 20s, Dolly was always trying to find a partner in life, someone that she could love, someone that she could share things with. But through it all, through all the ups and downs, all the breakups, all the bad moments, she always had her group of female friends to fall back on. I could have done without the random recipes that were thrown in there. Like she just, I don't know why, I don't think they add anything to the story. Because of the recipes and the random emails and the rough start that I had at the beginning of this book, I am going to be giving this a four out of five stars, but I'm still so shocked at how I could hate this book so much at the beginning and now I'm gushing about it. I think what I really love about this book is that it is so comforting in the fact that it tells you that you're not alone and the things that you are going through that you think are so huge and that they've only happened to you other people have also had to survive it and they're okay. Like they're on the other side of the finish line and they're cheering you on. And this is what this book feels like. It just feels like it's cheering me on even though I'm confused, even though some days are worse than others. This book tells me I can do it. They believe in me. And I don't know, I just, I felt so comforted by this book and I just really loved it. And I'm so happy that I pushed through it because otherwise, I wouldn't be experiencing what I am right now. Now that I finished everything I know about love, we're only missing one more book in this reading experiment, which is Conversations with Friends by Miss Sally Rooney. I don't think I can coherently explain how excited I am, but I think you guys know. I think you know. Like if you've seen me reading normal people and absolutely losing it over normal people, I think you understand why I'm so excited for conversations with friends. Yeah, like without further ado, can I just stop talking and just immediately start reading conversations with friends? Let's do this. interpersonal phenomenon and try to understand it as a social value system, it's both antithetical to capitalism in that it challenges the axiom of selfishness, 
which dictates the whole logic of inequality, and yet also it's subservient and facilitatory, i.e. mothers selflessly raising children without any profit motive, which seems to contradict the demands of the market at one level, and yet actually just functions to provide workers for free. Huh? I'm so, so, what did I just read? Did this book really need to be so pretentious and over the top? There were some instances where there was some really beautiful writing and some really wonderful ideas, but a lot of the times, more than a handful, I was just like, this is so pretentious. It was just annoying and it really took away from my enjoyment of this book. I don't think anybody is as surprised as me about the fact that this is a three star <gasps> um, for me. I really wanted to be one of the girls that got it, but I'm not one of them. I'm more like a confused girl. I'm more of a, I have so many questions girl and it doesn't feel nice to be that girl because I just wanted to get it. I wanted to be with the in crowd. I wanted to be like, this is so deep. This was everything. I wanted to cry. I wanted to go through a roller coaster of emotions. And all this did was just make me feel uncomfortable, maybe. We're basically following this one girl called Frances as she destroys her life, as she ruins everybody around her, including herself. She starts this affair with this married man, and even though she's friends with the wife, she's just sort of like, she doesn't care about other people, and she just puts her own needs and her own wants on top of everybody else's. She uses other people, even her best friends, to gain money. And it's like, why should I feel bad that your life is falling apart? Like, I really don't understand what this book was trying to do. And at the end, there's like this conversation with Sally Rooney and they ask her, what do you hope readers will take away from conversations with friends? And Sally Rooney says, for myself, I would like the book to offer a little solace in dark times not by providing any straightforward consolation about where we're headed, because I'm not sure that's possible at the moment, but by defending in some small way the possibility of love. I don't know how she did that. I don't know, <laughs> like, was that really her goal? Because all this really showed me is how painful love can be, how destructive it can be, how toxic it truly is. And I don't know how I can find any comfort in that. This book actually reminded me of The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath because in both of these books, our main characters are going through this weird phenomenon of they can't really recognize themselves. Like when they look in the mirror, they don't know who that person is. They're sort of going through this depersonalization or disassociation. There are some instances in conversations with friends where Frances is just sort of not all there. She's just completely disassociated from her reality and of course it's like a way of self-defense or just a way of not coming to terms with the things that she's doing or that have happened to her and I just found that comparison very interesting because The Bell Jar is one of the books that I read in part one of reading Bookstagram's favorite books and seeing the same sort of themes and the same sort of characters in part two I just thought was very interesting. I think the main issue is I'm not a big fan of cheating stories. Like I don't really particularly enjoy them. I mean, Taylor Swift does a really good job at romanticizing illicit affairs, but there's just something about reading about them that I just couldn't get behind. I couldn't really enjoy the story because of what it represented. To say that I am sad about not enjoying conversations with friends would be the understatement of the year. I really thought this was going to be a five star, a favorite new book. Yeah, I'm just disappointed doesn't even begin to cover it. But hey, that means I have officially reached the end of this reading experiment. I have read three Instagram famous or popular Instagram books. I've been trying to think of like an overarching theme that this video has like with these three books, but I don't really, I can't really think of one. Um, these books are so wildly different. I think the only thing that they have in common is that they're all written by women and they all have women as main characters and they all talk about 
female rage in a sense, maybe not conversations with friends, but these two definitely explore that topic a lot more. It's just like the different types of things that women have to go through and the way that we respond to them and the way that society thinks that we should respond to them is also a big theme in this. I know I literally just said I couldn't really find a common theme in these three books, but I think I just, I just, I just realized what the common theme is. And it's just women, women in general, that's the main theme. I think my main takeaway from this reading challenge and from Instagram in general is that we love reading about women, no matter if it's unhinged women, happy women, unhappy women, morally gray women, we just love reading about women. And I think that's a wonderful conclusion to come to. And I love that all of the books that I've been reading lately have been so woman-centered and they also help me sort of come to terms with my own experiences and my own emotions because for so long we've heard that women can't be too sentimental because otherwise you won't be taken seriously. And these books show us that that is not the case. You can be as sentimental and emotional. It doesn't make you any less respectable or it doesn't make you any less sane to show that the things that are happening around you and, and the things that are happening to you are affecting you. Let me know in the comments below your thoughts if you're interested on picking up any of these books and if you've noticed any trends going on on Instagram, some topics or some themes that seem recurring. Is it unhinged women? Is it the aesthetic? Like, let me know in the comments below. I would be so interested to discuss this with you guys. And yes, thank you so much for watching. I really do hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time. Bye. Hey, Jimmy, you nice. Keep going.